opening from the UN's weather agency comes one week ahead of COP26 in Glasgow. Let's talk to the environmental campaigner and crossbench peer in the House of Lords, Baroness Bryony Worthington. Thanks ever so much for, for joining us. So, you know, 1.5 degrees and a sunset for coal. Those are the headline grabbers, but what do you think will make a successful COP26? Well, for me, it will be um, all countries um, taking note of the seriousness of the situation we find ourselves in. We've known since Paris that everybody needs to increase the level of activity to cut emissions from fossil fuels and to sort out agricultural emissions. But still, all the pledges add up to a vastly uh, lower amount of effort than we need to get on track to keep the 1.5 alive. And the scientists are now almost screaming from the rooftops that more needs to be done, almost on an emergency footing, but yet uh, the progress is very slow. So for me, it's, a, I hope, a collective understanding of the seriousness of the situation we're in and the need for the bigger and more capable countries to do much more to reduce our emissions. That's the only way we're going to get to a, towards a more stable climate. And one way that those developed nations can do that is to commit the cash. But the Climate Finance Delivery Plan says that that long-standing pledge by developed countries to channel $100 billion a year to developing countries has been officially reset now to 2023, three years later than initially hoped. So what does that tell us that we didn't really already know? So the, the truth of the transition we need to make is that we need to see trillions of dollars invested in clean solutions. But there was a pledge made that $100 billion a year would be made available by countries, the poorer countries. And that question is more about trust and faith in the political process than it is about stopping climate change. $100 billion, I'm afraid, although it's a large number, isn't going to touch the sides in terms of helping countries to truly adapt. That's going to have to be done in multiple different ways, including through private sector financing. But it's a, it's a question of trust. But I think... If, uh, the vulnerable countries that I've spoken with, what they want more than anything, though, is to see countries treat this situation with the seriousness it deserves. It's clear there's nowhere to hide from these impacts, but the most vulnerable countries will be hit the hardest, and they've done least to create the problem. So they want to see far greater ambition and seriousness from the countries who can act. There does seem to be a lot of ambition to, to build a, a global playbook, a stronger set of rules and commitments. Where do you see the, the main roadblocks, the main challenges to that? So we've got to be asking for the right things. And one thing I think this COP will do is put the focus squarely on those sectors which are emitting. We're going to be hearing a lot about the need to phase out coal in the power sector, but that needs to be swiftly followed by a gas phase out too. We need fully clean electricity if we're going to stand a chance of decarbonizing other sectors. So the, the Paris Agreement famously doesn't even mention the word fossil fuels. We need to see a far more focused discussion around what it will actually take to stop us using fossil fuels. And the Paris Agreement pledges are one way. But if, if this doesn't work, if this voluntary approach doesn't work, there'll be increasing calls for a more top-down legal structure to stop fossil fuels being extracted. And I can see the clamoring and the calls for something much more targeted on stopping the problem growing if these COPs don't deliver the ambition we need. We need to hear the, the word from the top, that top-down approach you speak of. What role, though, does the consumer play here in, in terms of contributing to, to a good COP and to tackling climate change effectively? I would like to think of everyone as citizens, not consumers. And as citizens, what we've got to do is put pressure on our elected officials and on all of our representatives to take this issue seriously. It can't be solved by individual action. It can, can be helped by people doing the right thing, but the scale of the, and the pace that we need to move at now requires us to act politically and to make sure we create the right conditions for the right leaders sit around the table and agree the right actions. And I'm afraid that's going to have to come through active involvement in politics as much as it is about doing the right thing and buying an electric car or not eating red meat. Uh, those are important things to do, but they will not be enough. We need to see political action. Baroness Worthington, terrific to have you on the programme. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.